Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead, where our focus on um, self-reliance, food security, and emergency preparedness has taken us down a new path on healthy eating, which is a fit with food security and self-reliance. And today, this is another weigh-in, and first of all, I'm going to weigh in on snacks on the go. Now, when we were up at Bryce Canyon with John and Cindy, we had a great conversation about snacks on the go. We were sitting in our clam. Our clam is our screened-in um, little structure, which we really love. And we had a great discussion on snacks. And come to find out, their snacks are pretty much the same snacks that we have used over time. I did film it but the sound was not on. So the, you, the video that we did up there is completely useless. We'll be going over some of the very same things that we talked about here today. Snacks on the go are very different than having a snack when you are in your own home. And we're going to be doing a video on that next week on some of the things that you can do when you are at home. But this is when you're away from home, when you are at work, or for us, when we're out on our four wheelers or out on our bikes when we're hiking, when we're doing things that take us away from home base, whether home base is our actual home or whether it's our trailer. When we are out and about and need a snack, there are various reasons why that might be. One of the reasons for us, when we are on our four wheelers, we are gone several hours from our camp and we <laughs> swallow a lot of dust, especially me, because I usually ride behind Jim. Jim usually takes the lead. And so I've swallowed a lot of dust and my throat is dry. His gets dry too. And one of the things that we need is something that is comforting to kind of clear our throat of all of the dust. Another reason is we're just tired and we need more energy to continue our ride. And so nutrition is an important thing too. And the part of nutrition that we might need may differ from people to people. For us, it's energy. So that would be carbs and proteins. Also, over the past, um, previous to the past five years, for that 15 years that I was a professor rather than an administrator at a university, I wrote a lot of grants that were funded and put together teams of professors. And we took teachers out into the field. We went to the tide pools of Oregon. We went to the Great Basin and we came in our area to Zion National Park. We usually had about 30 teachers and about five or six staff people. And so we had, um, we usually traveled in vans and we would go out in our vans into the wherever we were going to be, where we would then um, go in various directions, hiking and doing whatever. So we were even away from our vans for hours at a time. We had in our backpacks, whatever we would need for the day. So that included water. I always had a camelback with water. And then I learned the right kinds of food to carry when I was, for instance, out in the Great Basin in the heat so that we would have lunch out there and then we would have snacks. You need something to carry with you that is going to survive whatever it is you are doing and accomplish the goals that you would like for us to do. Chocolate is not a good idea to take unless it's M&Ms sealed inside that little um, candy pod to keep it from melting. But we learned a lot about snacks and foods on the go. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I have learned about and that we talked with John and Cindy about and that Jim and I use when we go. We're going to start over here. I found, now you all know from what I've said before, that, um, and we have learned about macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. The micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. The big thing that I am working on myself personally is making sure that I get about 30 grams of protein per meal or about 90 grams of protein per day. And I, that's what it was when I was under my doctor's care. And I would admonish every one of us, if we're making any big changes to what we are eating, that we make sure that we clear it with our doctor to be sure that it is not going to be detrimental to whatever medical situations we may have. So I know I'm on good footing because I'm carrying on what I was doing about a year ago before I left my previous doctor. And I haven't I'm not seeing a doctor now for what, what she was, was a healthy lifestyle MD. 
So I'm just taking that on and learn for myself what I need to do. So I'm looking for protein. This little snack pack is, um, comes in a box of about, I think it was 16 of these in a pack. And these are cheese, fruit, and nuts. It's various types of cheese. This one has different cheese and then craisins. And then this one has cashews and this one has almonds in it. And looking at the back that shows the nutrition, this has 180 calories, but with that it has eight grams of protein. You're hard pressed to find a healthy snack like this that carries that much protein. So this was very appealing to me. What was not appealing to me was the price. These are about 75 cents a piece. And uh, Jim and I both really, really like these. So what did I do? I picked up some almonds and cashews in bulk. I picked up this variety pack of cheese at Costco and I made my own and I used the exact weight. I took one of these apart, weighed the cheese in grams, weighed the nuts and weighed the craisins so I would know the recipe. So at 22 grams of cheese, 12 grams of nuts, nine grams of craisins. And I knew if I could reproduce this, I would still have snacks that would give me eight grams of protein and not a whole lot of carbs. This is 180 calories, 13 grams of carbs, eight grams of protein. So here's what I came up with using the bulk foods from Costco. And I calculated how much these are a piece. And these are 59 cents a piece. So there was a little savings there, about 15 cents per packet, which isn't too bad. And now I can make my own. The other thing that I was um, looking for in the heat of the desert when we had teachers in the field, and also now when we're riding our four-wheelers all over the place, is something to refresh our throats. And that would be fruits, pretty much fruits. Now, these are little packets of apples and oranges. This is a half an apple and a half of an orange. And so here's one for me, and here's one for Jim. Oranges are great to put in your backpack, except for when you peel them, and then you get all of that juicy stuff on your hands. It's bad to clean. I raised six children, and all six of them were in soccer. And, and when they were young and on those soccer teams, my first husband and I were going always two different directions on Saturdays when they had games. And inevitably, one of the teams had the parents take turns bringing orange slices. And they had us cut the oranges in quarters just like this. That's very common for soccer. And I thought that that would be a great way to carry oranges. And then the acid from the oranges prevent the apples from browning too badly. Also, the harder vegetables are great to take as well. Apples, uh, celery, and um, jicama. And we're going to be talking about more about vegetables next week. When we now go out on our four-wheelers, I often don't do this, but rather I take these little clementines only. These are called cuties. And I, we, these are very easily peeled and they're not, they don't get the juice all over your hands. These taste like a little bit of heaven after you've been riding your four-wheeler for a couple of hours. So that's everything over here. In an upcoming Way In, we're going to talk about healthy fats. I'm learning a whole lot about healthy fats. Another good snack to take is just plain nuts because they have healthy fats. When you are going to take a food as a snack between meals, it's really good to know what it is that you're getting by looking at the macronutrients and the micronutrients to see if you're in the ballpark of where you want to be. There are 13 grams of fat in, in a, one serving of these, and um, a serving is one ounce or about 15 of these nuts. 13 grams of fat. Saturated fat is what we want to avoid, and there's only 2.5 of those 13 that are saturated. Everything else is unsaturated, which is pretty good. There's zero cholesterol. It's low in sodium. Carbs are 8 grams, no added sugar, and protein is 5 grams. And so this is a pretty good healthy snack, and almonds are very close to the same. 
um, just straight by themselves. Now we move over to the other things. And these were more in the line with what um, Cindy and John and Jim and I discussed as we sat together talking about healthy snacks. And they put things in their backpack when they go hiking. They go on long hikes and they go on long bike rides. And I wanted to just tell you that um, while I'm going to show you some particular things, what we do is not necessarily what you need to do. The important thing here is how to read the label and interpret whether or not it's giving you what you actually need. These um, manufacturers of these snacks, crackers and, and energy bars, they, they will use some things that are legal, they make some claims that are legal, but are sometimes can be just a little bit tricky, and so we need to be watchful of those. For one thing, one of the things that they will do is they'll load something up with vitamin B and say, healthy snacks, vitamin B, and then you turn around what it actually is, and it's full of carbs, but they've added that vitamin B. And so make sure that we are getting a balance of the macronutrients that we want. I really do like, we really do like, Jim and I, John and Cindy introduced us to these when we were down at uh, Lake Powell with them a month ago. These are Belvita. These are called breakfast something or others. They're little cookies. And um, they come in these little packs. And one package has four biscuits. Very thin little biscuits. They remind you of what you get on an airplane. So they're like this. So one packet of four. Now, if you look on the back, one of the things that you will see is that there are five servings per container. Oh, well, there are five little packets. So that makes it convenient. This is, this is good packaging when it tells you that whatever, how it's packed, this is what the nutrition is. I really like that. So one of these is 230 calories, so that's kind of up there. Fat is 8 grams with saturated fats only 0.5, which means all the rest is unsaturated, so that's an okay balance. We can take saturated fats, and we'll talk more about that when we, when we do the fats. No cholesterol, it's um, 210 milligrams of sodium, 36 grams of carbs, that's a little bit high. Of that, that includes 2 grams of fi fiber and 12 grams of sugar. Protein is 3 grams, so I get 3 grams of protein if I eat a whole package of these at 230 calories. So while I will eat these once in a while, this would not be my go-to, even though they're very delicious and I really do like them. And after this video, I'm sure Jim and I will be splitting this little packet. <laughs> um, Triscuit is a good example that when you read the um, nutrition label, six crackers are 120 calories, very low in fat, 3.5 zero saturated fat, so, so far, really good. Uh, cholesterol, zero. Sodium, 160, so that's lower than some things. Total carbs is 20, that's not too bad, with fiber being three and no sugar whatsoever, so that's good. And then it is, uh, protein is three grams. So this is a pretty good snacking cracker, and you can add a piece of cheese to that and even get more nutrition. This is one that John and Cindy use and that we have used as well. These are fig bars, and there's blueberry and raspberry. And um, these are pretty good. We carry these in our trailer whenever we go anywhere. Here is the nutrition information, and the nutrition information is given per package, and it includes five grams of fat, not too bad, and it is zero saturated fat, so that's excellent. And no trans fat. They are putting trans fat on labels now. Trans fat is really bad for us, so we need to avoid that. No cholesterol, 80 grams, 80 milligrams of cholesterol, quite low. Sodium, it, no. Cholesterol is zero. Sodium is 80 milligrams. Total carbs is 38 grams. All right, that's just a little bit high. That includes 3 grams of fiber and 19 grams of sugar. And then protein, only 3 grams. 
So I'm cutting back on these in favor of other things, in favor of the nuts and um, cheese packets that I made. So you can learn really important things by reading the nutrition label. I have not tried these before. I found these at um, Costco. Yes, we have. We have? Yes. We oh. used to get them by the box, bigger boxes. Oh, That's I remember place. those. Large two packs. I'm just going to open one. I remember these. Yes. These are advertised as, um, let me get this up here where I can read it. Baked crackers you can feel good about. It says so right on the package. And wholesome grains with incredible taste. Um, 14 crackers are 140 calories. Five grams of fat, that's pretty low. Only a half a gram of saturated, so that's really good. No trans. Um, then zero cholesterol, 110 milligrams of sodium, so we want to watch that. Carbs is 20 grams, not too bad. Um, total sugars, no added sugars, protein, 3 grams. Any time that you use, uh, and then um, look, look at the ingredients. The number one ingredients is brown rice flour, then sesame seeds, potato starch, safflower oil, flax seeds, amaranth seeds, chia seeds, millet. Um, so it has some good stuff in it. So this is a pretty okay snack. I'm not going to pig out on these at all because it's still not giving me the protein that I want. Then the last thing I want to show you is this trail mix. We have, I have used this Kirtland trail mix for years. When I need a quick energy pickup, when I'm out with teachers in the field or when we're out on our four wheelers, I not only use the uh, fruit that we have, the little tiny oranges, and then the cheese and craisin and nut mix, but I pack these. Now let's check to see if that is a wide choice for us right now, for me in particular. Now here's something that I never realized before. A lot of times when I look at the back, I just assume, I'm gonna open these so I can show you just in case you have not seen these before. So these come in these little packets, just like this. Now, get back to where the... So you're looking at one packet. 53 servings per container. So how many of these are in here? Well, there are only 28. Serving size is a fourth of a cup. Wait, 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 wait. There's 53 servings in this box, but there's only 28 two ounce packets. So what that says is that the nutrition information is for only about a little more than half of what is in here. This is the thing that you need to look for and discern when you're thinking mathematically about figuring stuff out. I love it when they give it per pack. This one is not per pack. I would have to do about a one and a half times what it says here for nutrition to get the nutrition here or otherwise I would need to um, just pour out a fourth of a cup and eat only that. So I want to see, all right, so it does disclose on the back of the little package that this is about two servings. So that's a little bit hinky as far as I'm concerned. So about this much contains 160 calories, ooh, that's a little high for that small amount, 10 grams of fat, Two grams is saturated fats, no cholesterol, 40 sodium, 40 milligrams of sodium. So sodium is a micronutrient and that's a pretty small amount. 12 grams of carbs, not too bad. 10 grams of sugar and once again, five grams of protein. 
So if I get, if I eat the whole package, I'm getting a little bit more protein than five grams, but I'm also getting almost double everything else. The bottom line for snacks is choose the snacks that work for you that are what you are looking for by reading and interpreting the micronutrients, protein, fat, and carbohydrate, and the macronutrient, nu macronutrients, vitamins and minerals that are listed on the back, and then make sure that the serving size adds up to what your need is. I do not get energy bars. Energy bars are way over processed for my taste, and I prefer to do simple things like this and the things that I can put together myself. If we are going to snack, it is important for us to use snacks that serve our bodies well. I hope that this information has been helpful, and now it is time for me to share my personal weigh-in on my weight. Here is my chart, and as you can see, I am down and I have met my first goal. I not only um, lost that pesky pound that I gained up at Bryce, but I lost two more. I am down a total of five pounds, meeting my first interim goal. So I'm pretty excited about this. Five pounds in three weeks is a pretty good loss rate. I don't want to go too fast and I don't want to go too slow. I'll hit a slow patch. I know it. I know my history. There will be times when I'm going to be flat across two or three weeks even, and that can be discouraging, but we'll just handle that when it comes. I know it's coming, but for now I'm doing one day at a time, and the thing of it is, with the protein that I am sticking with, which is about 90 grams a day spread over three meals, it really does curb my appetite for snacks, and I am having more energy. So far, so good. I hope you are doing well. If you're stuck in a plateau, don't be discouraged. Keep pushing. We'll get through it. And I'm so grateful to have all of the wonderful suggestions that everyone is giving. This community really does a great job of helping each and every member and sharing good ideas. And we learn from you all the time. Thank you so much for being with us for this weigh-in, and we will see you next Friday for another one.